Hey, look, man, look, man. Hey, I get around like Tupac. Niggas fighting over hoes that to jock the whole block. You already know what the fuck it is. DJ Jerry, man. It's that motherfucking Mixtape Trappers Radio. And right now, man, hey, I got more than a special guest, man. I like, I like giving niggas they flowers while they here, man. The legendary. The motherfucking legendary. Young Tweezy, man. Tweezy was had to. Hey, man, DJ Jerry, what the fuck it do, man? We up in the motherfucking building, man, drinking champagne for breakfast. You already see it, man. <laughs> yeah. It's going the fuck down, man. Mixed trade trappers, man. Yeah, man. DJ Jerry, man, hottest motherfucker. Yeah. Young nigga <laughs> in the city, man. Ain't no bullshit. It's up. Oh, the real. Hey, hey, you know, like, at the end of the year last year, you know, uh, 2019, like, it was a lot of wars going out. Like, motherfuckers was giving out rapper of the decade. Uh, producer of the decade, but I ain't hear nobody saying nothing about hustler of the decade. I got, I got a uh, hustler, the hust, hustler, the uh, what was it, hustler, the hustler of the year award at the Mula Awards. Yeah, shout out to Jimmy Earl. Okay, you know what I'm saying the Mula Awards is going down again this year, real big. I think it was the uh, the hustler of the decade or hustle. It was something the hustler some. Yeah, but uh, I appreciated that award. It was downtown at the uh, Fister Hotel, real big. You know, event, major event, everybody was down there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All the major players in the in the town. Hell yeah. Yeah. So. That's what it do. Hell yeah, but shit, like, what's the secret, like, the last, as long as you last in the game? I don't know. You just got to put God first. Yeah. You know? You got to put God first in everything you do. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what it is. Hell yeah. But shit, like, like I said, man, you've been doing this shit for a minute. Like, what is it like, like, witnessing all these different generations of the rap shit in Milwaukee? Man. To me, it's it's inspiration. You know what I'm saying? I love the young niggas. You know what I'm saying? So the little chickens, the little boo. Shout the, out little boo, man. For sure. Bring your ass up here too, man. Pull man. up. Boss man, trees, loony baby. You know yeah. what I mean? Man, I love them young niggas, man. You know, free uh, free all the, you know what I'm saying, the niggas that's up top. You know what I'm saying? That's gone. Welcome home to my nigga Big C. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's all love, man. I'm tuned in. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All the young niggas, it ain't nothing love. Ain't nothing but love, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But shit, like, uh, when you first started your rap career, your name was Young Twine. Like, what made you change it to Young Tweezy? I don't know, because everybody in the hood called me Tweezy. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying, you got to keep re reinventing yourself. You know, I started in 1996 okay. with the uh, Trump type. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, yeah, you brought that shit too, man. Show that shit, bro. Where he got the tape. He got the CD and the, uh, the tape, bro. Niggas don't even know about the cassette tapes, bro. Hell yeah, man. Classic. Hell yeah, but like, uh, you grew up on 13th for Locust. Um, you know, like, what was that like back in the day? Uh, a Straight Thing Lane. That's where that's where I started at. That's yeah. where I made my first bankroll at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's always going to be love. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It was just a one-way street. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing but one way to the top. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you it wasn't no up and down, you know what I'm saying, like the rest of the city, mm -hmm. you know, so it was Columbia Park, shout out to Zulu, you know what I'm saying, all the OGs, Robert Lounge, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, 11th Street, Wild Ones, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, so that's that's just basically what it is, you know what I'm saying, everybody around here had love, a lot of OGs, you know what I'm saying, a lot of robbers, a lot of gamblers, yeah. you know what I'm saying, niggas playing three card Molly, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> so really the OGs yeah. was lacing us up with the things to do and, what, and the things not to do, you know what I'm saying, so that's why... Always had so much love for Ace Trey because, you know what I'm saying, they wouldn't let you get into no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for you, it wasn't for you. You know right. what I'm saying? And they would let you know. Right. But so, but what's some rules that they instilled in you as a shorty? Shit, just just <clears throat> in the hood, the, the only rules was to the, to, the, to the mob was never trip on no money and never trip on no bitch. No you bullshit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never had no problem. Mm -hmm. You know? And always keep it 100. Your word is all you got. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been good. No bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but you had a chance to kick it with a lot of legendary artists. Like, out of everybody that you kicked it with, like, who remind you a little bit of Tweezy? Um, it, it's only one young Tweezy, but yeah. I done, <laughs> yeah, we know I done, that. I done know been that. around, you know, so many Biggie, Tupac, you yeah. know what I'm saying? A Ball and MJG, Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? Nelly, you know, Cuckoo, Baby Drew, you know, all these dudes, man, I look up to and respect, you know, it's, it's just like. Being around a mace, Puff Daddy, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like all these dudes, man, they was doing it so big and so major back then. It's just like, it's just always inspirational to be around somebody that's successful, you yeah, know? Yeah, no bullshit. Well, uh, how did Tony Draper inspire you? Tony Draper, I had met Tony Draper in uh, 1996 in uh, Houston at Penn and Pixel. Okay. And uh, he offered me 250000 for um, Trump Tight. 
Damn. And uh, I had a lawyer, Lindy Mitch in Chicago, mm-hmm. $250, $250 an hour uh, entertainment lawyer. A- actually, I just got on the phone with Tony Draper a couple minutes ago. That's still my, my partner. That's what it do. But um, it was him and Master P at uh, Penny Pistol. And basically, Master P was telling me, he said, man, listen, if you take this deal, you're going to be famous. You know what I'm saying? He said, but if you want to be rich, keep your own company. So the man had offered me $250,000, you know what I'm saying, to sign the Suave House. Damn. My lawyer... It was actually seven points, eight eight cent per point. So basically, at that time, I had my diss and Sam Goody, diss man. I was getting sixteen, seventeen dollars a CD. Damn. If I would have took that deal, I would I would only been getting eight cent per CD. You get okay, what I'm saying? Yeah. So basically, a record deal is only a loan. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if I would have got the money, it would have been for my recording, for my travel. You know what I'm saying? For my clothing, it would have been a budget. But I would have had to pay the money back. Pay right. the money back. So what I did is turn the deal down. Cause my lawyer said it wasn't a good deal, and I ended up hanging out with Tony Draper, and the man ended up taking me all around the world. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere he went, I went. You know what I'm saying? He showed me the business, and taught me the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So that's why I'm probably, you know, what I'm saying, still here today. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but but shit, like, how you getting linked in Houston? Because of, though, I love Houston, man. Like that's like my second home, bro. I got linked in because I was I was actually getting my album covers done. We was hustling in the street, so we had money already. So that's what I'm saying. To offer you some money when you already get money, it really wasn't no big deal. Actually, I wanted to be famous at that time. Mm. But when I talked to Master P, he made it clear that, that you know what I'm saying, famous and broke wasn't cool. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, I just stood down and, and just took the ride with dude and learned the game. No bullshit. How many you think you sold at that Trump Tech? I sold a whole bunch. Yeah. Right now, on, uh, if you Google it right now, it's, it's right now that Trump Tech right now is rare. You know what I'm saying? It's like 150 to 500 a CD. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? That was made in 1996. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we probably sold probably about five to 10,000 copies of it out to Trump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the Sam Goody and then this man and all the little stores. But what I'm right now, it's so hard to find. Um, Steve-O, he bring people down here from Japan. They tried to give me five, 10,000 for my my um, for my masters to take it to Japan and China to sell it. But I wouldn't take it because they was telling me they was only gonna print so many copies and then come back to me for, you know, uh, uh, another issue. But I, I really couldn't believe that because if you in China, I ain't in China. I don't know what's going on in China. <laughs> right. I don't know how many you gonna print or what you gonna do. So I never even sold my masters. I own all my masters. I own my own company. I own my own uh, hookah store. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I just got the contract with Exotic Pops. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So Shout I'm still out to H Town, man. Yeah, exotic pop, exotic pop, shy, exotic pop, Houston. Let me see what he got, bro. What, what that's, is this, that's that fan of peach. Peach, yeah. Fan of peach. Yeah, thirty dollars. That's thirty dollars for that fan of peach. Yeah, yeah, and he got the blue joint. Look, he got the Pepsi blue. Pepsi blue. That's thirty dollars too. Yeah, yeah. That's that crushed cream. I'm, I'm taking this one, bro. Open it up and taste it, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's taking, twenty-five dollars right there. Taste that motherfucker. See what it tastes like, baby. They say it tastes so good when you pour it in the cream, man. Eh? Yeah, I don't sip though. Yeah, well, you sipping. Yeah. You sipping. <laughs> That's that rich nigga soda. That's a motherfucker good. Yeah, cream soda. That's motherfucker good. Hell yeah. Hey, so yeah, let, let them know where, where the hookah store at. Uh, hookahs by Tweezy. Home of the $10 hookahs and the exotic pop. 6050 West Fond du Lac. We open 24 hours. We, dis- we wholesale, retail. You know what I'm saying? We open from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day, you know what I'm saying, 60, 50, what's final, like hookahs by Tweezy, come get your hookahs, we got the candy for the kids, you know, we got, you know, the hookah flavors, the hookah coals, the hookahs tips, we got sodas, we got slushies for the kids, yeah, yeah. we do free haircuts for the kids once a year, and we did do the book bag giveaway for the pit boss once a year also, so, you know, pull up and support, you know what I'm saying, if you need a hookah, you know what I'm saying, if you need coals for us, tips, you know what I'm saying? If you need a delivery, we got the delivery. You know what I'm saying? So pull up. Hookahs by Tweezy. 6050 West Fond du Lac. Hottest hookah shop in Milwaukee, man. Home of the $10 hookahs. This is a $10 hookah right here I'm smoking on. Bullshit. Lie. For real. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you, you know, like I heard you say uh, you met Big, you know what I'm saying, back in the day. Like, like how, that, how, you, how you even get that to happen? Because a lot of motherfuckers on this earth can't say they met Tupac and Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how, how you even link with Big? I was in, I met Big a couple of times. I met Big in Orlando, yeah. and then I met Big in uh, Vegas. The picture's on my Instagram, okay. so it ain't no cap in my rap, you know what I'm saying? Right. I was just, you know, a fan of music, and I was all, always at the Jack the Rappers, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Jack Gibson, okay. you know, down in Atlanta, and always at the fights to see Mike Tyson and all, you know what I'm saying, different type of celebrities. Like I said, that's what I was, 
um, you know, inspired by being around people that was winning, you know what I'm saying? And being around people that's, that was successful. MC Hammer and, you know, um, you know, shout out to do it to death. You yeah, know what I'm saying? My yeah. brother, you know what I'm saying? F1 Diamond. I just left his church a minute ago before I came, but that's what we was doing, just taking trips and being at all the major events that was going on. So, you know, really when you there, you're going to see everybody that's somebody. Right, I feel you. Was sure. it, like, what was his person out of the league like? He was the man. He was he was the Don. Like I said, when I seen him in in in, in Orlando, he was just blowing up. Okay. But then when we got back up in, in Vegas, he was really tapped in. You know what I'm saying? He had the Bloods and the Crips with him. You know what I'm saying? So he was okay. really tapped in around there. You know okay. what I'm saying? And Biggie and Tupac was in Vegas at the same time. Wow. Yeah, so, you that's, know, it was up. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I had, like I said, like you just said, like I seen the shit on Instagram. Like, I didn't even know you was in the background of that picture with Pac, bro. Like, oh, yeah. That shit was crazy as hell. Like, like what what event was that? That was that was the Tyson fight. A Tyson fight? Yep, that was at okay. the 662. Um, that was Suge Night Night Club down yeah. here in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, but that was right after the uh, Tyson fight. Snoop, everybody was down there. Dog yeah. Pound, Snoop, you know what I'm saying? Dre, Pac, you know, you know everybody that was somebody that was, was down there live, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Doing it big. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Well, shit, that, yeah, that's what's up, man. But, you know what I'm saying? You seen both of them, you met both of them, their personality, you rock with their music. Like, like who you got, Big or Pac? You I got love, to choose. I love both of them the same, but like I said, Pac was more live to me. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He was like, you know, he was live. Pac, Pac fucked Madonna. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. Hey, that's a whole other level, dog. And, and keeping it real, Pac knocked Biggie bitch too. I hey, saw that yeah. picture too. Hell yeah. So Pac was a real player, man. Yeah. Most definitely, you know, I'm Pac all day. You know what I'm saying? He the coldest nigga to ever do that shit. For sure, no doubt. Hell yeah. But shit, like you had, you said a record studio back in the day, man. Like, what was that like? That was actually, it was called Pitbull Studios. That Pit was Boss. on 28th and Burleigh. I had uh, just got out of prison. I think it was in 2007. Okay. And uh, I had promised myself, I said I was done with the life of crime. I was basically, you know, I had did a burglary. Okay. And, uh, and ended up getting caught. My bail was 20000 mm -hmm. This was in Missouri. So it was 10% of that. So my grandmama ended up coming and bail me out. Rest in peace to Elton Wilson. Mm -hmm. I got out of jail. They gave me five years probation. I ended up five and a half years probation. I ended up doing five years probation. Ended up getting violated probation with, with six months left. They ended up sending me to prison. So I was working in prison for 15 cents an hour. My phone calls was 10 cents a minute. I really didn't have you know, no paper, so I really didn't have nobody to send me no money. So I was working. You get paid once a month. So like I said, when I got out, I said, I'm done with the life of crime. I'm done with all this stealing and selling dope and, and robbing and changing price tags and all that knockout ass shit. So... I opened up me a store in my trunk. When yeah. I got out of the jail, I took my girl car, went to Chicago, bought, you know, a lot of shit, T-shirts, mm. socks, blunts, and I was selling in the hood. I would pull up in every hood, pop the trunk, they buying T-shirts, sweaters, socks, hats, whatever I had, buying them. You know what I'm saying? So in three months, I ended up buying a store on 28th and Burleigh. Mm. I went up to uh to uh Uncle Bob's and bought the studio. You okay. know what I'm saying? And then named it Pitball Studios. Tapped in on Burla, stayed there for about four or five years, and sold the whole building for thirty five thousand. You yeah. know, I sold the business and the building, and then that's when I bought the hookah by Tweezy on Sixtieth and Fond du Lac. Real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how that happened. On the real, that's what's up, man. Hell yeah! But like, what was that like being a rapper, having your own shit like that, like back in that day? Um, I always had my own shit. Right. You know I mean, saying? studio, like, oh, you always had your own studio and shit, too? No, I, right. when I was recording in 96, I was going to Chicago to CRC, to Job Records and, you know, uh, Job Records and CRC down in Chicago. So I was recording. I was hustling all day and night and then going to Chicago to record because okay. I had Bernie Grumman do the mastering and then I recorded in Chicago. And then I, I had Pen and Pixel, you know, one of the hottest uh, graphics designers in, in the country do the album cover. So like I said, as we was hustling, you know what I'm saying, and investing the money in the music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it, I mean, to have my own thing, it was cool because I didn't really have to really pay nobody but the engineer. You right. know what I'm saying? But then also I could help other people too. You know what I'm saying? In the hood and all the people that was doing the music. Shout out to Cash, Ball, and Vault, Money in the Vault. They up next. They on their way out. You know what I'm saying? So. Hell yeah. It was just really something to do, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to make sure that the people in the city had a place to come where they could feel like they was home. For real. Hell yeah. And like I said earlier, man, like, like, do you feel like you got overlooked, like, when, when Drew and Cuckoo was, like, at, at the at the head of their prime, you know what I'm saying, back then? Because, like, like you said, you was doing all type of shit. You going out of town. You was getting your shit mastered by the top dogs. Like, do you feel like you was getting overlooked back in that time? 
No, I don't feel like I was getting overlooked. I feel like um, I feel like I was one of the hottest in the city. You know what I'm saying at my time. But when Cuckoo dropped that white tape, it was over. He was he was the coldest that ever did it. Yeah. I took the tape. I knew he was hotter than me in the street, so I took the tape to Tony Draper, my big homie. You know what I'm saying, and got Cuckoo a deal. Oh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I got Cuckoo his first deal. Then, like I said, after he left, he left Suave House. He went to Tommy Boy. Yep. You know what I'm saying. That's when the Mi Project shit came out. Yep. And Baby Drew, that's my nigga. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Shout that's, out Drew, that's man. That's my dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So it's like it ain't nothing but love. I always love both of them. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying with all my heart. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I never felt like I was overlooked because everything they did, they 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 had me in it. You know what I'm yeah, saying, right. Cuckoo. Number one in the country. We all in New York at the MTV Awards, BET Awards Damn. with Big Ticket, California at the Soul Train Awards. Everywhere he went, I was there with him. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't nothing but love. So I couldn't feel like I was overlooked because I was overbooked. I was right there with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the boy, Them bro. my dogs. That's my boy, my heart. You know what I'm saying? I'd have been in the man's house. I done seen the man move from 19th and Capitol all the way out to Brookfield. Damn. You know what I'm saying? They That's the best that ever did it. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't got nothing but love and respect for him. No bullshit. Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out Drew, man. Shout out Cuckoo. Hell yeah, but like everybody know, like uh, you the mayor of the city, man. Like how you get the name uh, Mayor of Milwaukee? I don't know, man. I don't know how I got that name. Yeah. But um, I had got out of the penitentiary, and I know uh, Doc B had called me. Shout out to Doc B, yeah. Big Boy Production. He's like, man, you know everybody called a little Boosie the mayor. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I my weight wasn't up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, yeah. I really, I really wasn't in no, in no. I ain't had my strength up. I ain't had my weight up. So it really, it wasn't nothing I could do. So I ended up getting my weight up. And then, you know what I'm saying, like I said, I had met Boosie, and I had seen him backstage at uh at the concert downtown for Reggie Brown's birthday. Yeah. And 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 we was chapping up. He was like, man, he was like, uh, he was like Tweezy. He was like, man, he said, them y'all niggas in Milwaukee show me way more love than, than my own city. And then I understood where he was coming from, because they love Boosie in this town, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I love Boosie, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like I said, it, I really, when I first heard it, like I said, is... It was kind of like, damn, why me? Why I got to be going to, up against one of the hottest motherfuckers in the country? You know right, what I'm saying? Right. But I guess, you know what I'm saying, it's all love. Like I said, now when he come to town, I pull up on him. You know what I'm saying? We smoke. You know what I'm saying? He grabbed that smoke. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. hey, man, I ain't got nothing but love, man. I, right. I, I was showing love when I knew they was hating. You know what I'm saying? So. I ain't with nothing negative, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do all positive things for the city, you know what I'm saying? No so that's what I'm on. Because if you think about it, if a lot of motherfuckers listen to that, you was kind of boosie before boosie, if you think about it. Yeah, but see, this town right here, this a follower's town. Mm. So you got to go out of town and hook up with some people. That's what I did. That's when I hooked up with A-Ball and MJG, you know what I'm saying, and did what I did, all major shit, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like this town right here, they only support you after you blow, after yep. you do a bid. You got to look at Rico Love. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at Tank. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You got to look at all the people that Jacob ever made Lattimore. it. Jacob Lattimore. All the people that ever made it, they had to go out of town and go do connect their dots, dot their I's and dot their T's, and then come back and bring it back to the town. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it just is what it is. Like I said, I never really, like I said, I really was really trying to give me some money. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That was the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So, I did the music because I loved it. You know right. what I'm saying? I done had billboards all on Sherman and Final. Like, mm -hmm. I paid for all that stuff myself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, it wasn't really about that. But like I said, it's, I wasn't the best rapper, but I was the best businessman because I went to college for business and marketing. So that was the difference. That's you get crazy. what I'm saying? That's what's up. So. Hey, yeah, but, you know, like, since you've been hustling, like, back in the day, like, you know, the streets have changed a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what do you think a lot of the young niggas out here doing wrong today? I can't say, I can't knock the hustler. I can't knock the hustle or the hustler. Right. I can't say they doing it wrong or right, but I'm just saying it's just like, just keeping it real. When we was hustling, we didn't steal cars. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a new generation. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, there wasn't no kids getting hurt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and that's the difference in right now, like I said, is, but it wasn't no heroin on the streets when I was hustling. You know okay. what I'm saying? I stopped hustling in 2007. You know what okay. I'm saying? When I got out of the penitentiary, I said I was done. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So after that, like I said, is I ain't touched nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of my niggas dead. Rest in peace to pit boss. A lot of my niggas in the penitentiary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I respect the game, and mm -hmm. that's that. But I'm just saying at the same time, it's this new generation. These young dudes, they making a whole lot of money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I can't do nothing but respect it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, is 
I'm not with polluting my community. You get okay. what I'm saying? I'm not willing to, you know what I'm saying, poison my community. They got fentanyl. They got they got all these different type of drugs, pills, molly, lean. Like I said, it's, I respect it, but I don't entertain it. Like I okay. said, I don't use no drugs. I don't do that. I drink me some champagne. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I host a lot of parties. You know what I'm saying? But the young dudes, man, I ain't got nothing but love and respect for them. You know what I'm saying? I love to see them shine, and I know they got to do what they got to do to get get to where they got to go. Only thing I would say to them is get you a bag and buy you a business and get out the game. Because yep. why you want to go to the penitentiary for the rest of your life? I done seen a lot of dudes, you know what I'm saying? My nigga Snowball, yeah. he in the penitentiary right now. My nigga Big Jim, he in the penitentiary right now. My nigga Big Kev, he in the penitentiary right now. Kingpins, boss. Mm-hmm. You don't even hear their name mentioned no more. So you did all this hustling, made all this money, and you in the penitentiary, you're you going to spend 30 to $60 a, a week? Come on, man. That's that that It ain't cool. You and know you what can't saying? get no pussy in there. You can get some pussy if you're a made man. Uh-uh. You know, <laughs> jail, hey, the jail don't, listen, my nigga, jail don't stop. If you a king, you a king. Yeah. If you a king, you're going to get everything on the street that you can get. You know, everything in jail that you can get on the street. That's crazy. Weed, money, oh, whatever yeah. whatever you want. Pussy, because you're going to knock a bitch that's in there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I done did it before. You oh, know what I'm saying? I done been locked up and knocked a bitch that was a CEO or, you uh, know what I'm yeah. saying, whatever it may, may have been. But I'm just saying at the same time, is ain't freedom is priceless. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's... I don't wish I don't wish jail on my worst enemy, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I just wish, you know what I'm saying, all my young niggas, you know what I'm saying, get your bag up, you know what I'm saying, and get you a, you know what I'm saying, find you a, 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 a chick and open you an adult health care business or, you know what I'm saying, a daycare or whatever so, it is, you know what I'm saying, to get you some money and, and get out there, you know what I'm saying, taking the risk. The risk got to be worth the reward. No you know bullshit. what I'm saying? That's the only thing I'm saying. No bullshit. I don't knock the hustle or the hustler. No, you, you know can't. what I'm saying? Don't even get that fucked up. And I respect all my young niggas. I ain't no old school player hater, man. I yeah. love to see my young niggas shine, boss. On the real. No bullshit. On the real. And that's what made me like you too, like, because like you never came across uh as like one of them old hating ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? Ever. I was talking to my nigga Tay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, Tay and Van, shout out, congratulations to my nigga Tay. He just got married. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, engaged the other okay. day, gave his wife a big dime and all that, them my boys. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And Tay was like, man, why the, why them old niggas be hating on the young niggas? And I couldn't understand where it was coming from because I was all into moving forward, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and, and trying to put different systems into place to get ahead, you know what I'm saying. But the young niggas always inspired me, you know what yeah. I'm saying. If I seen you winning, you know what I'm saying, I would say, hey, man, how you did that? You know what I'm yeah. saying, how you do that? How you did that? How you do that? You know what I'm saying? And they would tell me, you know what I'm saying, and I would listen, you know what I'm saying. So it's like if you listen, you learn, you know what I'm saying, and it's like, Man, I ain't got no hater in my blood. I ain't got no hating in my system. You know what I'm saying? I just love it to see somebody win. And like I said, I know if you can do something illegal, you can do something positive and be really rich. You know what I'm saying? So that's well, what it is. It's all in your mind. Yes, sir. Mm, real. Yeah, but do you think the perks in the lane, do you think that should ever get up? Hey man, I'm making money off I'm making money off the lean right now. I'm selling exotic <laughs> props. So I'm damn sure not knocking. <laughs> Them young niggas, man. Them young, them young niggas drinking three hundred dollars hey, sodas, 30, man. Hey, thirty for a motherfucker. Thirty, uh, and then when they, put, when they put the lean 30. in that motherfucker, it might be a hundred fifty or three hundred dollars soda, boss. I seen a young nigga put boss four pints in the soda the other day. He said, "Man, this a three hundred dollars soda." I said, "God damn it!" Yeah. Some I, young niggas having their way in this town, boss. Yeah, I'm too fucked up for all that. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never drunk one, but I know one thing: them things selling like hotcakes, baby. Oh yeah, well, definitely. exotic pop. Shout out to exotic pop, number one motherfucking soda brand in the country. Hookahs by Tweezy, the only authorized dealer in Milwaukee. Look on the website: Hookahs by Tweezy, sixty fifty West Fonda Lake, man. Home of the exotic pops, man. It's that cream, vanilla cream, man. They said it tastes so good when you pour it in the cream, man. Oh, bullshit. Yeah, man. Official distributor for exotic pop, Milwaukee hookahs by Tweezy, man. Hell yes, yeah. sir. Hell yeah, but if you think they had all this shit in the nineties, you know what I'm saying? When you first got out here, like, how you think the rappers would react to it, or you think it'd be any different, or you think it'd be the same effect? You was talking too fast, so I was listening too slow. I don't know uh, what you say now. <laughs> no, I said if they had lean and perks and shit back in the nineties, like how you think the rappers would cope with that shit? They had tees and blues. They had they 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 had their things that they was doing back then. Like I said, is it's just a new generation. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's they like different things. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I don't knock them. Like I said, is hey, nah. it is what it is. I like to drink me some champagne. Yeah. You know, I might smoke me a joint every now and then. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey man, I hey, it is what it is. Whatever you like, if you like it, I love it. I don't have a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I I accept you 
how you come, you know what I'm saying, or how you came. I ain't, I ain't trying to change you, you know what right. I'm saying. But if I if I if I know you'll listen, or if I know I fuck with you, I'm gonna grab you to the side. Say, man, okay, dude, you doing good now, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And then when I tell you what I'm gonna tell you, you gonna he gonna reply, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. It might be a yay, it might be a nay, but I gotta understand it from their point of view on where they at. You get what I'm saying? Right. I'm from back here. They from right here, so I got to look at them, too, mm -hmm. before I can make sure I stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? I got to stay concurrent. Look at me, man. I'm wearing I'm wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't wear these in my day. Nah, you're right. So you're I right. had to upgrade myself. You're right. You got to move with the time. You got to move with the time. I can't mm -hmm. live in the past. You're right. It's gone. Yesterday gone. I can't change it. You're right. Yeah. Hell yeah. But uh, like you said, we, we know you got the story, man. Like, What made you even want to start the uh, hookah store? Um, I, I had started... um. I had started selling hookahs. Uh, shout out to my man Jimmy Earl. He had gave me a job at Courtside, and uh, I worked there for about a year, and saved all my money. And then uh, it was a storefront that came available, and uh, I was like, "Shit, I'm selling all these hookahs out my trunk and selling all these hookahs at Courtside. I might as well open my business and see, you know what I'm saying, how it go. You know what I'm saying? So I had ended up investing like thirty five thousand in the business, new floors, chandeliers, you know. Stop, you know, everything and then open up. I opened up in like two weeks. Yeah, because that used to be a disc man. Back this man, shout out to my man Jim. He still owned the building. Okay. And um, I always used to, when I was a kid, I used to sell my CDs there. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like I said, so it was really just an honor for me to be able to purchase, you know what I'm saying, or lease a building that I used to look up to because, like I said, I used to go there, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, as a, as, a, as a child. And then when I started doing music, I sold my CDs there, and then when it came available, I was like, "Shit, I might as well," you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I know it was a money getting spot. Right. Man. So, hey, yeah, like I said, like we all know you positive, but you know sometimes like negativity just pop out of nowhere. Like <coughs> it was a video, like somebody was getting whooped or something in the store. Like a lot of people had some crazy stuff to say. Like, like how? Like what was your what's your take on? It? I actually I had got whooped too. Like I said, they really be playing. You know what okay. I'm saying? That's my man P Dub. You know what I'm okay. saying? And um. I had got a lot of calls about it. You know, my man Johnny Jones had called me like, man, take that down. That ain't cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, like I said, it was really a joke. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That people didn't like. You know what I'm saying? But we play like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, it happened. You know what I'm saying? And P-Dub's still up there. You know what I'm saying? And it's all love. That's my man. Right. We, we, we make sure P-Dub get clothes. We make, P make sure P-Dub get food. He come from Monroe, you okay. know what I'm saying? Shout out to my big cousin, Big Face. Shout out to D-Boy. Mm -hmm. So it ain't nothing but love. But we play like that. The same thing they did to him, they did to me. You know what I'm okay. saying? But I don't know if they put it up or what had happened, but it wasn't cool. You know okay. what I'm saying? So like I said is, we living and we learning. Like I said, right. is, and we make mistakes too. So yeah. like I said, it wasn't cool, and I don't approve it, prove of it, but I'm just saying at the same time as it happened, and it is what it is. Yeah, yep. most definitely. Yeah, but shit, like, uh, to this day, like, like, what's the coldest advice you think you got? Coldest advice I got? Today. Like, just period. I think, I think the coldest advice I ever got was treat people how you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's, it, it ain't no big eyes and little, little you's in this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I'm better than you. You know what I'm saying? And I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, you better than me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like... I'm going to respect you and put you in a position to get you some money, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, if you're around me, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, but you got to treat people how you want to be treated, you know what I'm saying, because if you don't treat people how you want to be treated, then when you fall, you know what I'm saying, it's going to be bad for you because when you go up, what goes up comes down. So you got to always stay humble, remain humble and treat people good, man, you know what I'm saying, or if, if you ain't going to treat them good, just don't have no dealings with them at all. Right, So for real, yeah, because that karma shit real. Real as a bitch. It's real as real as holy field that karma. On the real. You you only get what you give to the world. You For know real. what I'm saying? So whatever you put out, it's gonna come back like a boomerang. So you gotta always know that and understand that. No bullshit. Hell yeah, man. Shout out the car family, man. RP Dorothy, RP Ma. You know what it is, man. DJ Jerry, man, young Tweezy. What's happening? You better say it. Don't watch me, watch your bitch, man. <laughs> Shout out to my big homie, DJ Jerry, man. Yeah. Beyond Entertainment in the building, man. Y yeah. Be up in this motherfucker, man. Happy New Year 2020, man. Young Tweezy in the building, the mayor of the mill. Who goes by Tweezy in the building? Bitch. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but what's the next event though? Like, what's the next event coming up? Man, we got we got Black Youngster February first. February first. We got Cash Dow February fifteenth. We got Tay B uh, February 29th. Shout out to my big homie Wonder Bread Re. Yeah. Shout out to Isha, you sit we slay. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's going down, man. Yeah. Runway Retox Tycoon. You know what I mean? It's up, man. Yeah, it's going down. Shout out to Element. Shout out to my nigga Twin Tower. Shout out to my nigga Big Big Baby SME Big Baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the All promoters that hired your boy to host, man. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? It's up, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shout out to Reggie Brown. You know, shout out to Homer Blow. Yeah. Shout out to Doc B. You know what I mean? Shout out to Tony Neal. Yeah. Shout out to all the power players around the town, man. It's up. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Um, but shit, like, how was it, you know what I'm saying, growing up with uh, your parents? You know what I'm saying? How was your parents in your life? Oh, man. Hey, man. Shout out to my mama and my grandmama, man. I ain't never seen my daddy in a day of my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he had to be a bad nigga to fuck my mama, man. Yeah. Ain't no nigga making no lady <laughs> take her clothes off, man, if he ain't a bad motherfucker. So shout out to my daddy, man. You know what I mean? Thank you for getting me here. I'll take it from here. You say it. <laughs> shout out to DJ Jerry, man. Shout out to my motherfucking pops that I never seen, man. Yeah, went from overlooked over book, man. Live on DJ Jerry. The one and only big homie, young Tweezy in the building. Bitch. Bro, look at the cassette, bro. Yeah, Trump tight, baby. Yeah, fucking around, man. He's got all type of shit up here, man. He's got the exotic pops of cream. You know what I'm saying? That's that blue Pepsi. I know, we gotta get through this. Side. This the one, I wanna try this shit. Exotic pop, man. Go get you one, man. Hook is about Tweezy. Pull up.